Hello, this is Sean Mullery here from uh, Electronic Engineering in IT Sligo. And in this lesson, I'm going to just give you a very brief introduction to the Dev C compiler. Uh, I'm going to show you how to write a program, how to compile it, and put it out on the screen. So, firstly, you must find where you've uh, downloaded it. And remember, it's freely downloadable, uh, the Dev C compiler, and there are different versions of it. So, uh, you may come across a slightly different version than I have here. Um, so, I'll just double click on that. And uh, it comes up with a tip for the day, like many of uh, the software products that you come across uh, these days, so you can kind of choose to ignore that. Sometimes the first time you open it up, uh, it also gives you a number of options about how it wants to set it up, uh, and you can make your own decisions with regard to that. Now, uh, what we're going to do to start off with is we're going to um, open a new file here. Um, so a new source file. I'm not going to bother doing projects for the moment and adding different files and so on into it. I want to do it, keep it very, very simple for the moment. Now, one thing you will notice, or I hope you've noticed, is that this is actually called the Dev C++ compiler. It's not called the Dev C compiler. And we're doing the C programming language, and many people believe that C and C++ are the same thing, but they're not. They are, in fact, very, well, not very different languages, but they are different languages. Um, I, I often compare it to uh, C++ being the English language and C being Latin. As you know, um, the, uh, the English language uh, derived many of its words from Latin words, uh, but it doesn't go the other way around. Okay, so C came first, and then C++ was a language that built on top of that, but it is a different language. The important thing here is that this compiler can do both. However, it needs to know which one you want to use uh, in your particular case. And for that reason, it's vitally important that when you click save on a file, you put a .c extension on it. If you don't, it'll automatically default to .cpp, and I'll show you that in a moment. Um, and if that occurs, uh, you may not spot it at first, and it can often throw some unusual errors just because there are slightly different rules with the C++ compiler than there are with the C compiler. Okay. Now, I'm going to write a very simple program here, and I, it, it's not the uh, purpose of this particular video for you to understand how the program works. I simply want you to see a program written and how we compile and execute it, and, and that gives you an idea of what you'll be doing for the rest of the course. So, very simple program to start off with. And uh, I'm putting a little library here at the top. Now, but depending on which version you use, um, you may find that... Uh, in this particular case, for example, when I when I did the opening um, angle bracket there, it automatically put in a closing one for me. Uh, you may find that in uh, in other versions it doesn't do that for you. It can be both uh, a blessing and a curse because sometimes you automatically go to put in the closing bracket or whatever it is. You can see it's done it here again. I opened a bracket, it closed it for me. Um, so just just be aware that that's happening if it is in in your particular version. Uh, it can be a help if you get used to it, but sometimes it can be a little annoying. So I'm going to uh, write something out to the screen and I'm going to say, hello world. And this is almost, uh, I don't want to say superstitious, but um, it's generally speaking, the first thing that you do in any programming language is you write a little thing that uh, sends out some sort of a, a signal. Um, you know, so, so if it's going out to the screen, you write a little hello world uh, thing like that. Or if, it, if you're running on an embedded system and all you've got is an LED, well, one of the things you do is first problem you do is you write a little problem to switch on that LED or switch it off or flash it so that you know that the, the system is working. So all we're going to say is hello world there. Um, I'm going to put in this thing called system pause, uh, which again, depending on the system, you may or you may not need, uh, depending on the version of the compiler that you're using. I don't need it in this, in this particular one. However, uh, in some other ones, I do need it. And what happens is if it's not there, my hello world pops up on the screen for a fraction of a second and then disappears again and I don't get to see it. This way, at least, no matter which system you run it, or which uh, version of the compiler you run it on, uh, you will get to see it. Don't worry about the rest of the um, of the program that we've written there. Uh, it's, uh, as I say, I'll, I'll be doing uh, further, further ones later to explain that. Now, Generally speaking, because this is a very, very short program, I've written it all without saving it, but I really would urge you not to do that style of thing uh, when you're writing longer programs, because uh, if the computer switches off at all or you have some sort of a power failure, you will lose your program. So uh, always quite quickly go down to save as and save it as something. Now, I'm going to save it here, and uh, what I'll do is I'll go to another directory, because as, as you can probably guess, I've written this one already uh, at a different time. So... Um, 
I'll open a new directory that I want to put this in. That's great. And you'll notice here that save as type and it says save as type C++ source code dot CPP and so on. They're all C++ extensions and we don't want that. Now you can click on this and go for a C source file there. But the handiest way to actually do it is literally just to write in here, uh, and I'm going to call this one hello world for obvious reasons, and I'll just put .c on the end. And if I do that, it saves it as a .c. You can actually look up at the very top here. If you look, look at the, the purple line across the top, it says D, um, because we're on the D drive, C programs, hello world, and it's hello world.c is the name of it. Once that .c extension is on the end, it runs the C compiler. If not, it'll run the C++ compiler, which has certain differences. It still tries to run a lot of the C code, but it doesn't quite do it the way we expect it. Okay. Um, so the last thing then that we do is when we've written our program is we want to compile it. And the compiling process basically turns it from the high level language of C into the binary code uh, or the executable code that can run and that the, the, the computer understands. And I mentioned that in a previous uh, video uh, about what the computer understands. So it turns it into that binary code. Um, so the compiling turns it into that and the running of it makes that run on the computer. You can do those as separate um, tasks. And we see here, we've got this, uh, this icon here for compiler. We can just hit F9, that'll compile it. This one will run it, but I'm going to compile and run to do the two at the once. And this is what you do most often when you're uh, actually writing your, your programs. So I'll click that. And this is fantastic. I didn't even intend to do this, but it happened anyway. Uh, it's given me an error. OK, and because it's given me an error, it means that it can't run it. What the error means is that I've written something that it has. It doesn't know how to interpret that. It doesn't know how to change it. It's clearly found a mistake. Now, the mistake in this particular case is that um, I have a an opening set of uh, quotes here and I should have one closing set of quotes and they should be the other side of that in. But I have two sets of them and that caused a bit of confusion. And I think that's my only error, but we'll we'll know soon enough when we try again. So this is one of the things that you will get used to. You'll be doing a lot of this. It's very rare that your, your, your program runs the first time. Now, do be aware that just because your program does compile properly without any errors just means that it's possible to turn it into computer code. It doesn't mean it's doing the right thing. It just means it's possible to turn it into computer code. And that's uh, it's important to know the difference. So we'll run that. And hey, presto, it has uh, worked this time. So it's come up and said, hello, world. And that thing that says press any key to continue, that's caused by that system pause that I put in earlier. OK, so generally it's a good idea to uh, to put that system pause at the end because that's what stops it uh, from running on. Now, as I said, in this version of it, that happens anyway. So if I press any key, we'll notice that this happens again and it tells me a little bit of information. It says press any key to continue. But in other versions of this uh, compiler, that doesn't happen. And uh, the thing can flash up very quickly and then disappear. So it's worthwhile putting in that system pause all the time anyway, just to be sure. OK, so that's a computer, uh, a computer program running. Just to recap on the on the important things in this in this one here is that firstly, uh, this compiler does both C++ and C. C++ is a different language. Uh, I don't plan to cover that witchy. Um, so we're only doing C and therefore it's important that if you want to run the C compiler, you must save your file as a .c extension. So we've written a simple program here. And again, you know, I don't necessarily expect you to understand all the different instructions that are in that program. That will come with time uh, in, in some of the later uh, videos. Um, but just that you see that that's how you write it in. So you, you go file, you, you, you choose a new um, source code file and you start writing the thing in and you save it and you save it as a .c. And the last thing is you do a compile, uh, a compile and run at the one time. Um, and that way then you can, and it'll, if you have any errors, it'll prompt you to try and solve them. And if not, uh, it'll run it. Okay. Um, the errors as, as you'll find as you go can sometimes be a little bit hard to interpret, uh, but we'll do a little bit more on that later. I want to keep these videos as short as possible. Okay. So thank you for that.